Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. If you will enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments to help me boost this video. Thanks. Story 1. You don't want a tip. Listen, I've been there. I've been a cashier, delivery girl, and food runner at my old fast food job. I know what it's like to not get a tip. But I never, ever asked straight to the customer's face. You don't want to tip me. That is just so uncouth. And what did you do tonight for me? And my friends, AYC Sushi Night. You brought us our food. The food that we ordered from a tablet. You barely interacted with us. Hell, the host interacted more with us. He at least asked us if the tiny table was fine. And helped us out when we thought that our tablet was broken. If I was tipping him, then I would absolutely give. All you did was try to rush us out when we were discussing how to split the bill listed on the tablet. And asking if we were done. Oh no, not yet. I just want one thing of ice cream, and then we'll pay. I said, I get it, at Buffet's, you don't want customers to loiter and eat all the food. But how are you going to bring me the bill before I even get my ice cream? We hadn't even eaten that much. We went through maybe two rounds of food and one cocktail we shared before we felt stuffed. I just wanted one more tiny thing, and then we'd be good. I put it all on my card. And my friend paid back her share in cash to me. She's the one who got the cocktail too. I get the card back, fill out the receipt, and just converse with my friend, waiting for the food to digest. They take back the check. We converse some more. My friend's still trying to polish off her cocktail, but she says she can't, so I chug it for her. I got you back, bestie. And the dreaded moment. Excuse me, you didn't leave a tip on the check. You don't want a tip. And also, you forgot to sign the bottom. I was so flustered, you guys. To be fair, that last part is my fault, but my friend and I were literally just talking about how we're introverts. And this restaurant was great because we don't have to talk too much to the servers. Not to say we're crippled in that sense, but you know, sometimes you just don't feel like socializing with strangers. But now, so I stutter and fumble for a bit before taking out my wallet and fumbling more with the cash my friend just gave me. By the way, the server food runner, not a true waitress in the sense that she took our orders, is staring at me the whole time, waiting for what she probably expects to be 20%. In any other situation, I probably would have. But one, I'm struggling right now to get consistent income. I work per diem and only get paid twice a month. Adding to that, I was already freaking out earlier because I lost my debit card somewhere, so I had to pay with a credit card. Two, our bill came to over $80. It's $30 per person a change from before inflation. It used to be $25 for a YCE, and my friend's drink came to around $14. Adding tax, it came to that. I get it, everyone that night was working hard. It's Saturday night, it's busy as hell. But if I'm gonna tip someone, I'd rather do it for a person who was super nice and accommodating, and be actually interacted with me beyond getting me the food. When I was a cashier, I never expected tips. When I was a food runner, I never expected tips. I would graciously accept when I did, but never did I openly ask for it. 3. Earl, you were super rude. I'm sorry, but you were. Your tone might have been neutral, but you definitely implied I was being scummy for not leaving anything. I did feel a bit bad, up until the part where you called me out. Now I'm scared of looking like a dick in front of my friend. So I slowly sign the receipt she's still staring BTW, and I reluctantly take out $7. I gave her a tiny bit of empathy. Maybe she has a quota to meet or whatever, but I sure as hell wasn't giving her 20%. She said thanks and took back the check. My friend straight up told me I should have just given the $5 bill. And honestly, I should have. We should have just bounced after they took back the check the first time though I guess we couldn't have because I had to sign anyway. And I don't know if it was the alcohol I just chugged or the lingering sense of embarrassment, or both, but I was still fucked up when we got back in my car. Friend and I just watched a video for a bit until we got our bearings. Am I being overdramatic about this? Yes, or was I justified for initially not intending to tip at all? Let me know. Story 2 I hate when extra stuff gets added to my food. I'm lactose intolerant. It used to be a dairy allergy, but now I just take a pill before eating dairy. I still only eat certain things, and only when I want to. When I was a kid it was annoying, because not only could I only eat certain foods, but every once in a while, 
when we'd go out to eat, the server would add something to be nice. I specifically remember being a kid and out for breakfast, ordering the kids pancakes or something, and it coming out with whipped cream on it wasn't listed with whipped cream on the menu. Only for the server to proudly say I added a smiley face for you. My parents would send it back to be remade, and I'd have to wait longer for my food. It would happen often enough that my mom would tell them when we ordered not to put anything extra on it. I thought those days were over, because dairy allergies are more common now along with other allergies, and I feel like restaurants are more aware. Apparently not. Last night I went out to dinner with some friends. We decided to get dessert. I ordered apple pie. There was an option to get ice cream with it for more money, but I did it. I don't like ice cream even with my lactate, which I didn't have on me. Our dessert comes out, and there's ice cream on all three. I told the server I can't eat ice cream. She takes it back, but clearly just scraped it off the top and brought it back. The top of the pie looked wet. I asked for a new piece because I didn't want soggy pie. She brought a new one, but when I got my bill, there were two pieces of pie on it. It sort of became a back and forth. I felt like I was being a jerk. My friend said I was making too big of a big deal. She was trying to be nice, and I probably ruined it for other people by hassling her about it. Either of them have food allergies or sensitivity, though, and don't know how irritating it is when someone messes with your food. I worked in restaurants almost half my life. I'd never add random stuff to someone's food. Story 3 Worst Refund Apology for Bad Service For reasons I don't want to get into, the bad decision was made to get delivery from the pizza place named after a game. Confirmation says 35 minutes 45 minutes for delivery. 30 minutes after confirmation, tracker app says it is out of the oven for quality check and it sits there on quality check for 30 minutes before out for delivery. Now at 15 minutes after quality check appears, I attempted to call them. No answer. Continued to call until the app says the driver is at my door. The driver tells my husband that he's sorry for the wait. He's the only driver. Manager says he will be in contact to make this right. Blah, blah, blah. It was supposed to be two pan pizzas and an order of cheesy bread. I got two hand tossed in pan boxes, and another hand tossed in a regular box. No cheesy bread. These pizzas were obviously ran through the oven to reheat them after sitting for 30 minutes before being sent out for delivery. Crust wasn't burnt, but toppings were obviously a dead pizza. Along with not being pan thick crust, and edge to edge they had two inches of no topping crust. Hap won't let me make a complaint, says they haven't been delivered yet. No one will answer the phone. Hungry Family says, screw it, it's 9.15 p.m., it's still edible. Edible, yes. Enjoyable, no. Might as well ate the box. Might have had more flavor. ETW, this is now 1 hour 45 minutes after ordering. An hour past promised delivery time. Had an email from them, sorry, that delivery wasn't up to our standards. Here's our apology for that. My option is to click the link. Link takes me to two options. 60 points, which is a free medium two topping pizza, or a 50% off coupon for my next order, good for 60 days. I should have answered the door and refused them, but husband beat me to the door and sympathized with the guy because he's done pizza delivery on nights like this. Yeah, well, he's paying the price now. He's sick to his stomach after eating over half of one of them. I ate one slice and am slightly queasy. Kiddo says he's fine. I threw the leftovers in the trash. I won't be accepting either of their apology offers and will get pizza from the gas station before ever getting another from the game place. Story 4 Was she the Karen, or was I? So today I went to a thrift store in search of a couple chairs for my breakfast nook. I found the perfect fit for my space, brand new chairs, and lucky for me, 50% off of all green tags, the tags were green, woo. I grabbed two chairs of the three available and headed up to the register. When the cashier went to ring up my purchases, he could only find a tag on one of the chairs. He was very concerned about this and told me that sometimes chairs are sold in pairs and wanted to be sure about it before he rang me up for two. I told him that I was pretty sure that they were being sold individually because there were three available for sale and they all had separate tags on them. I guess as the tag for the second chair fell off somewhere when I made my way up to the register. Anyways, the man wasn't comfortable with just ringing me up for two 
and insisted that he check with his supervisor first. So we waited and waited. My three-year-old was losing his patience, flopping his body this way and that in the cart, asking when we were going to get out of there. The line behind me was piling up, and people were staring at me impatiently, like I was the one causing the hassle. We continued to wait. The man at the register called for backup cashiers, but the line had gotten long after waiting for such a while. The supervisor finally arrived, clearly already irritated. The cashier asked her if the chairs were sold as a set or separately, and she looked at me as if I was the one asking, and scoffed. They are sold separately. We can't give you two chairs for the price of one. Do you still want them? And then I said, politely, yes, I do, thank you. Then she stared at me blankly for a second and said, I also can't give you the 50% off the chair without the tags. You'll have to pay full price for that one. I was starting to get a bit flustered at this point. My kid was having a meltdown. The line behind me was getting longer. People were staring and the lady was just being mean. So I replied, still a bit confused. So you're not able to just scan the other tag twice. If it's really a problem, there's a third chair I can grab that does still have the tags on and I can switch it out for that one. I pointed towards the chair, which was just an aisle away from where we were and would have taken less than 30 seconds to grab and be back to the register. The woman paused for a moment, then looked me dead in the eye and said, no, you can't do that. You can either pay full price for this one right now, or you can go get the other one and take it to the end of the line. At this point, I was so overwhelmed that I wanted to cry. We had already waited such a long time, so I pathetically pleaded, really. And she said, yes, so are you going to pay full price, or go get the other one and get back in line? At that point, I was so anxious and overwhelmed that my mind was jelly. But my subconscious wasn't going to be bullied into paying full price for an item that was on sale or be pushed into waiting in a line that I had already waited in. I didn't answer her. I took my cart, walked over to the chair that still had the tags on, and took it back to the cashier. The woman stared me down as I approached again, but she didn't say anything further. The cashier had begun helping someone else just before I returned who frustratingly had a full basket of items and needed to look at a bunch of things in the jewelry case, which made my time in that store even longer. After an unnecessary amount of time, my son and I finally made it out of there. I was so overwhelmed that I cried when I got into the car. I tend to be emotionally triggered when I feel like I'm being treated unfairly. Ed and I was in the prodromal stages of a migraine attack, which later became full-blown. From my standpoint, I really feel like I was treated unfairly and I feel like other people would be in agreement. But maybe my judgment is clouded. Was I acting Karen Why? I feel vindicated in not having complied with the unreasonable ultimatum I was given. In retrospect, I probably just should have walked out. Many have mentioned that the cashier should have stepped in. There was a bit of a language barrier, and I don't think he had the ability to explain well. I did end up calling and was able to explain the situation to her superior. She was very kind and apologized for the experience. She told me that they never have the customer get back in line in those situations and that I should have been allowed to grab the other chair. She did say that she was going to document the situation and have a talk with the woman to make sure it doesn't happen again. All is well now. Thanks for the solidarity. Story 5 So we thought we'd try a meal kit service as a diet plan. We were so hungry for meal prep for work we got straight to the root of the problem. Controlled portions, special ingredients, extra variety. What could go wrong? Well, just, we started by spending half an hour telling them what we liked. Which turns out to be everything except one protein type, one nationality, and one flavor profile. After this you get to review the items they think they should send you first. Or first week of meals they picked will be chicken, 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 chicken with nationality we declined, chicken, more chicken. Our snacks, chicken flavored in way we said we don't like, chicken flavored in nationality we don't like. Well okay then. So we spend the time removing all but one chicken and actually picking a variety of foods. We planned our meals and shopping for the arrival of our first food box until the day of arrival and no arrival text. Food sat exposed to freezing temperatures and precipitation for hours. Yay, and we open the box. No fruit, all the snacks are missing. Oh look, we have meat, 
but no seasonings. We have rice, pre-cooked and poorly sealed in a bloated bag. We have an apple for one of the meals, moldy. We have chopped greens and vegetables, damaged because they froze in the weather when they never sent the notification. A special bonus has somehow changed itself from some nifty almond coconut concoction to oatmeal raisin. Yikes, no problem, we'll just head to the website and mark the problem items. But wait, you can't do that because the order doesn't acknowledge it's arrived until nearly 24 hours later. Finally get to report all the problems. Have to wait another day for a response because they're busy. And it's an offer of a quarter off the next purchase when we've already canceled the account. They can't send or replace any of the damaged or missing items. Yes, we're eating plain meat and fish with no seasoning and no vegetables while we call the bank for a chargeback. Wow, what a service. Story 6 Would be theft for me, but not for thee. I went to a gas station yesterday in my smaller, mid-sized Texas town. I bought two cans of tobacco and a Gatorade totaling $16 and paid using my debit card. The total was not displayed on the card reader, and when the clerk pulled and looked at the receipt, he made a funny face before offering it to me. As he handed it, he said he accidentally charged me $116 instead of $16. I acknowledged the mistake and politely asked him to just put it back on the card. He immediately told me he couldn't do that and started explaining to me how I could recover the money he overcharged me. He said he'd give me the receipt with the overcharge and a corrected one and write a note on it, and I could go down to my bank and explain it and they'd give me $100. Now, I'm not a business person at all, frankly, but this didn't seem like the best option to me. I couldn't get him to accept that his plan wouldn't work, so I called my bank and had to put them on speakerphone so they could tell him the same thing. Bank said if we couldn't resolve it, I could file a dispute once the charge came through, but I'd have to cancel my card and jump through hoops. I asked the clerk to call the owner, and he immediately told me the owner is busy and doesn't have time to talk. I asked him to simply give me a $100 gas credit or cash instead. There were immediate buts to all of the solutions I offered. Before I got off the phone with the bank rep, I asked if I needed a police report to prove what happened. And of course they said we don't have to have one, but it's helpful. So I said loudly so the clerk would hear me as I had walked away to verify identity with my bank. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get the manager, owner to resolve the issue. And if I can't, I will call the police and make a report. I didn't want to go to that extreme, but also didn't want to leave without my $100. The clerk then had a new plan. He said the owner would be there in the morning, and I could just come by and get my money then. He was still refusing to even attempt to call the owner, so I called the police non-emergency line. Keep in mind that the conversation between the clerk and I all this time had been civil. I have lots of patience, and simply don't like confrontation. The clerk just seemed to want to ignore the reality of the situation, that the business had taken my money and was refusing to give it back despite me offering several alternatives to resolve. I chose the word take carefully when I tried to sum up the situation in a simpler way because I had no desire to escalate or call it theft. He kind of seemed surprised, saying defensively I didn't take your money. I explained the situation over the phone, and the PD dispatch said it wasn't a criminal matter, but a civil matter between the business and I. I then asked if it would be a criminal matter if I took $100 worth of items off the shelves and walked out with them, and she said it would. I, flabbergasted, let out a sigh and thanked her for her time. Not trying to make this a police bashing thing, but WTF. The clerk then says I can try to call the owner, walks four feet from the register, and dials the number of the owner, which was written on the wall. I didn't ask why all of a sudden he changed his mind. At this point I'm recording, not pointing it at him or being a Karen in any way. I was really afraid nobody would believe how fucking stupid this whole thing had been and I'd still be out $100. Owner doesn't answer. Clerk starts writing the note he wants me to take to my bank. And I tell him we already talked to my bank and it doesn't work that way. I'd been there for an hour at that point, and the clerk starts having discussions with other customers telling them what happened and why I should just take the note to my bank. I ignored it. He tries again to call the owner and gets an answer. He spends about five minutes on the phone with the owner 
and clearly he isn't explaining the situation effectively. He's trying to tell the owner about his note to my bank ID. I asked him to give me the phone. As he hands it to me, he says, if you can even understand him. And I'm expecting very broken English and difficult communication. Within one minute of me explaining the issue to the owner, who spoke perfect English, BTW, the situation was resolved. I gave the phone back to the clerk, and he pulled five twenty dollars S out of the till and handed them to me. I thought it was even Stevens, but take his icing, no. Yesterday was the last day of February 2023. I discovered after I left the store that one can of tobacco expired in November 2022 and the other in December 2022.